Snowbreak's Verdurous Holiday event is now live, and with it is a new variant for everyone's favourite cat girl Moxia. Shadow Car Moxia is a support unit that specialises in amplifying ballistic damage. Her standard skill dance of the undead has three variations and will deal chaos damage on hit. For stage one, Moxia yeets her little robot buddy, Kebashet, at the enemy. It will travel a short distance before exploding and deal chaos damage to nearby targets. Stage 2 and 3 can be activated by holding down the standard skill prompt to consume Marx's stamina and charge up the attack. Each charge gives Kebashe faster movement speed, damage and the ability to gather targets that are in close proximity to its path. Dance of the Undead can be further enhanced using her Neuronics cluster, Enhancements and Scales Off Moxia's Max HP. Her support skill Vein Squeezing Bind performs similar to standard Moxia's Mind Blast. This ability will attach itself to a main target and up to three adjacent targets. It will cause chaos damage over time every second, transfers 110% of the damage it takes to the targets attached and disappear once the main target has been defeated. While the support skill is active, Mauser cannot take the field and pressing the skill prompt will end the skill early. This ability's damage over time scales of Mauser's max HP. Squeezing Bind can be further enhanced using her Neuronics Cluster enhancements. Her ultimate cyclical collapse will knock up targets caught in its path, slow them and deal shadow damage that scales off Mauser's max HP. Weaver. Cyclical Collapse can be further enhanced using her Neuronics Cluster Enhancements. You are bound. Supplies. Her passive Ancestral Protection grants one stack of dialectics to the on-field operative. Once the stacks reach 10, the next shot fired by the operative has its crit rate increased by 100% and its crit damage amplified by 80%. Stack only resets if the fired shot hits its target. Miss shots do not reset the dialectic stacks. Stacks will also reset if the on-field operative leaves the field. For each 100 alignment index Moxia possesses the effect is increased by an additional 20%. When it comes to weapons, Alloy Truth is obviously going to be her best in slot, giving her tons of bonus HP, which many of her skills scale with. In addition to many other benefits, the weapon will not only help with her support capabilities, but also her personal damage. For free-to-play players, the wave is a fantastic choice. Even though its stats are not as high as Alloy Truth, you are getting some bonus HP and bonus damage for your on-field operative. The weapon can also be purchased from the event shop and max out for free, so I highly recommend you get it for your Moxer if you're not going for Alloy Truth. Alternatively, Hypochlorous Acid will perform very well if you have it. Even though it's a frost weapon, Marxa does not have any elemental restrictions until she's M3, so it's fair game. For our logistics, the new Amana squad is going to be our go-to. It has a 20% bonus HP for the two-piece, which, if you recall, most of her kit scales off. For the three-piece, we get a 30% ballistic damage boost for the entire party, when a support skill is used. In addition to that, when the operative equipped with the set deals damage with their support skill, that damage is further increased by 20%. This set deserves a video on its own. I would recommend you guys get at least two sets of Amana before the event ends because it will no doubt be very useful in the future. For substats, HP, skill haste, S energy recovery, and bonus index alignment are the ones to keep an eye on. For her manifestations, M1 and M3 are the ones that stand out to me. Although we like to keep things free to play friendly around here, you can earn these over time by completing your personnel files, so I would recommend farming her M1 eventually. For Neuronics, it's all about priority. The two special nodes for squeezing bind is mostly what you need for a functional support shadow K. This will give you a better uptime on her support skill and allow her to bind up to six targets. If you're going to run her as a sub DPS, you can level the other four clusters, starting with Dance of the Undead and then her ultimate. Alright, so in terms of teammates, 
three units really stand out. Number one is Winter Solstice. Number two is Fanny Coronet. And number three is Ethereal Cloud. The reason for this is when it comes to ballistic damage, those three are already pretty strong. So when paired with Shadowker, who will further amplify that damage, they can hit some serious numbers. Here is an example, against our flying waifu here. Yao is hitting 19,000 per shot. No biggie, right? It's just Yao doing Yao things. But if we wait for Shadow Car's passive to activate and take another shot, she now hits for 37,000, and that's just from the passive. Okay, let's kick things up a notch. In her ultimate, she's now hating for 80,000 without Mox's buffs. With just Mox's passive, she now hits for 180,000. Oh, don't worry, it gets better. If we throw in her support skill vein squeezing bind, while the passive is active, we're looking at a ridiculous 300,000 damage for a single shot. By the way, do you guys remember how annoying it is to fight this boss? I think I've made my point here. Basically, anyone that can deal a decent amount of ballistic damage is going to be even better with Shadow K on the team. Your third can either be a healer or a shielder. In closing, Shadow Car Marxia is an absolute monster of a support if you have Winter Solstice, Fanny Coronet, or the Ethereal Cloud, this character will greatly amplify their already fantastic damage capabilities. I'm not a big fan of the words, must pull. But if such a thing really exists, Shadow Car Marxia is definitely one of them.